Alright, I want to do a little Bible study today on do angels have wings. It seems like everywhere you look, if someone draws a picture of an angel, they always want to put big old huge wings on the back of an angel. But is there anywhere in the Bible that tells us that angels have wings? Are all the pictures you see of angels true where they go around with these big old huge wings on their back? Is that really what angels look like? Well, first of all, let's go to Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 2. Because the Bible tells us something interesting here. This is a verse that, that is quite interesting indeed. I'll start in verse 1. Hebrews 13, 1 says, Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain, entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Now what an odd verse. It says there are some people who have entertained angels unawares. That is, you have talked to an angel, or an angel has come down and, and been close to you, and you didn't even realize it. Now, possibly that's talking about the Old Testament, but a lot of people say, well, that claims that, that happens today, that angels can come down and, and take the form of a, of a human, and you can talk to them, or they can talk to you. Now, I don't know, but what an interesting verse. It says you have entertained angels unawares. Now, if angels had wings, how would we entertain them unawares? <laughs> I mean, does that make sense? If an angel came down and these big old long wings are hanging out, you'd go, oh, that's an angel. But if angels did not have wings, they would probably look a lot like you and I. Now, I've had two times in my life where there was something really weird that happens. And I don't like talking about this. I'm not a charismatic. I don't like to talk about that kind of stuff, you know, visions and dreams and, and angels and such. But this Bible verse does say that someone has entertained angels unaware. And I'll just tell you briefly the two different times in my life where I wonder if I ever entertained an angel unaware. It could have been, could not have been. I don't know. I'm just going to throw this out here. I'm not the only one. I've talked to other preachers that say, well, there's been some strange things that happened in my life. And, you know, I look back and I think, maybe that was an angel that I entertained unawares. Who knows? But one time I remember being someplace and it was a public area and I was sitting there reading a book. And all of a sudden some guy came right up to me and just looked down at me and he says, hi. And I read my book, and I kind of looked up and said, hey, and, and went back to reading my book, and he sat down next to me. And I'm reading my book, and I just got this really f odd feeling. And it was just like, it was like pure innocence. And I kind of looked over at the guy, and really clean-cut, nice-looking fella, and I just felt like, oh, that, that just feels like that's a really clean, innocent human being. And I didn't pay him much attention, and I just kept reading my book. And a few minutes later, I looked around, and the guy wasn't there. Now, usually I'm a pretty obser observant fella. <laughs> you know, if the guy would have walked up, I would have seen from my peripheral vision that he got up. More. So, I was like, did he just disappear? I mean, what? So, I can't say definitively, yes, that was an angel. I have no idea. But it is odd, looking back on it, thinking, well, that was, that was a really odd situation. Could it have been that I entertained an angel unaware? I don't know. I'm not saying yay. I'm not saying nay. I'm just saying, weird. <laughs> Very weird. Well, the other time, and this was the weirdest time, because, you know, there's not only good angels and God's angels, there's also what the Bible calls fallen angels or evil angels. And uh, this story that I'm going to tell, I, I kind of wonder if I didn't entertain maybe an, an unclean angel for a second there. Because I was out surfing with a friend of mine, and we had to have been about 18, 19 years old. I believe I already had started Bible school. And I'm getting off the beach with a friend of mine, and we're walking back to the car, and we're starting to talk about God and the Bible. And as soon as we did, boom, right in front of us was this straggly looking man with this long beard. And his black, his hair just is black. And his eyes as black as black. And just black beard. And he had a Bible right under his arm. And I, I looked at my friend and he looked at me and we go, uh, hi. I mean, he's standing right in front of us. I mean, we can't get around the guy. And he says, I'm here to tell you something, boys. And he pulls out the Bible from under his shoulder and he opens it up and he starts reading. And I don't know where he read from, but it was something to the fact of, Thus saith God to Israel. And he started reading this passage of scripture and when he did, I started thinking, well, I wonder if this guy's saved. I wonder if he knows the truth. I'm going to tell him this. And as soon as I started thinking, I'm going to tell him this, he looked up and he just kept, his mouth just kept going of what the Bible verses said without looking at him. And then he looked back down like he was reading again. And I think, okay. And then I listened to what he was reading. And I said, well, I think I'll tell him this. And when I said that, he looked up again, kept going like he was reading, and then went back down. 
And I said, okay, there's something weird here. You know, maybe the guy's just on drugs and he got a Bible and he wants to go around and preach. But the weirdest thing, man, is he when, he, when he saw that I wanted to witness to him and I wanted to say some stuff after, he got done and he slammed his Bible shut. He said, that's all I have to say about that, boys. He put the Bible back under his shoulder and then over this side, and then he pulled out some cigarettes and they were women's cigarettes. It was the weirdest thing. He said, I don't usually smoke this brand, boys. But he said, this is all I got now. And he pulled out these long Virginia Slims, put one in his mouth, lit it up, and said, have a nice day, and walked away. And my friend and I were just sitting there, looking at each other, going, what just happened? <laughs> this weird guy comes out reading us the Bible, then lights up a Virginia Slim cigarette, and walks away. And we just kind of stood there stunned for a minute. And then we looked down the beach, and the guy's way down there walking. And it was just as soon as this, I looked back and said, what's the deal? We looked back, the guy was gone. Now, we didn't run out to see if his footsteps stopped or anything, but we both had a weird feeling about that. We said, what, what, what was that? Did we entertain an angel unaware? I still, to this day, have no idea. I mean, that was weird. All I know is we entertained a very strange dude that liked to smoke cigarettes, and I guess all he could get a hold of was women's cigarettes. So... Some have entertained angels unaware. Maybe he was a fallen angel. Maybe he was a bad dude. I don't know. What was he doing trying to read us the Bible and then reading some old scriptures from the Old Testament about Israel that had really nothing to do with us today? So I don't know, but the Bible tells us that there were some people at certain times that have entertained angels unaware. What odd verse. Maybe you in your life, looking back, there might have been a time where an angel actually might have showed up and you entertained them unawares. But if you think that they had wings... Wouldn't you know they were an angel if they showed up and then these big wings come out of the back? Well, as we look through the Bible, what we'll find out is in the Bible, there's not any verses that tell us that having angels do have wings. In fact, many times angels have appeared to people, and when they did, the people who saw the angel said, oh, they were a man. They looked just like a man. They didn't have big wings. They looked just like a human being when they appeared. So what we'll do is we're going to start out, what are angels. What are angels? Well, let's go to Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 13. Because the Bible tells us and answers this. So the first thing we want to ask today is, what are angels? What are they? You know, a lot of people don't believe in God in the Bible, so they don't believe in angels. But if there are such a thing as angels, and I believe there are because I believe the Bible, what are they? What are angels? Well, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 13 and 14 tell us, but to which of the saints said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Which to the angels? So we have God talking to the angels. And verse 14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? So the Bible tells us what are angels. Well, the Bible says angels are ministering spirits. They are spirit being beings that have a purpose, and that purpose is to minister to mankind. So maybe people have entertained angels unaware without knowing it because God sent an angel to take care of someone and protect them from some, some evil or certain thing. Years ago, I used to read those books by, I believe it was Frank Peretti, you know, the, the books about prayer and the angels, and I can't even remember the titles of them. But uh, those were interesting books and really made me think about things I never thought before, how in the spirit world, God has all these angels and they're doing things behind the scenes in the spirit world that we can't see. And they're battling demons. And, you know, there's people God wants to be saved. And the devil's trying to keep them from getting saved. So God's sending angels over here to, to keep them away so that they'll hear the gospel to be saved. It's just odd. But there are things called angels in the Bible. Now, Psalms chapter 8 and verse 5, the Bible is talking to us, we who are human beings. And it tells us that as created beings, what we are. And according to the Bible, we're just a little bit lower than the angels. Psalms chapter 8 and verse 5 says, well, I'll start in verse 4. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visiteth, visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. So what are angels? Well, they're a little bit higher than humans. So somehow or another, on God's scale of beings, they are higher than man. Man's made a little lower than the angels. 
Now what else? What are angels? Well, let's go to uh, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 12. We find out that they're beings created by God for a specific purpose, and most of that purpose is somehow ministering for God. But these angels, they, they're curious. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 12. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported. Unto you by them would have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. So the angels are spirit beings that are curious. And they in the spirit world, curious, look into the natural world, and some of them have a purpose. They're sent by God to do certain things. So they're curious spirit beings made by God who have a purpose of God to do things. And they can literally appear unto man. And some of them are sent by God, and some of them are sent by Satan. Now, who are angels? We looked at what are angels. Let's look at who are angels. In the Old Testament, the angels are called the sons of God. Now let's look at a couple of verses on that. The Old Testament, angels are called the sons of God. So God made them. He must be their father. Job chapter 1 and verse 6. If I can get back to Job. Job chapter 1 and verse 6. Here it is. In Job 1 and verse 6, the Bible says, Now when there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. So here we have in the Old Testament the sons of God appearing before God. Verse uh, 1 of chapter 2. Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself. So Job 38, 7. Job chapter 38 and verse 7. Job 38, 7 says, When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So all these angels that God created before he created man, they had a job, and their job was to shout for joy and to sing before God and appear before him. It's almost like they were his army, and God had a purpose for them, and they all appeared before God, and God said, okay, your job today is this, and your job today, and sent them out to do things. So who are they? Well, they're called the sons of God. Now in the New Testament, in the New Testament, the Christians are called the sons of God. So in the Old Testament, when you see the word sons of God, it's always referring to the angels. In the New Testament, when it refers to the sons of God, it never refers to the angels. It's always referring to saved people. John 1.12, Romans 8.14, Romans 8.19. I'm not going to read these verses, but you can look them up on your own to see son, sons of God in reference to those who are saved. Philippians 2.15 and 1 John 3 verses 1 and 2. So you have in the New Testament the sons of God are Christians. But the Old Testament, the sons of God were angels. Now, Back to the Old Testament for a second. In Genesis chapter 6, we find something happened to some of the angels. See, the angels must have free will because there were some angels that chose to rebel against God, just like Satan. And those angels today, these fallen angels, they serve Satan rather than Jesus. Well, what do they do? Well, in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 2, it says that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. In verse uh, 4, And there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, and they became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. Here we have fallen angels, somehow, falling from heaven, and procreating with humans to produce giants. Now if you get a chance, go to YouTube, and uh, look up my name, Robert Breaker, and look up the, the video I made about giants. Nephilim, they're called in the Bible. And it might open your eyes because the Bible gives you the names of at least five different giants. And it gives you the size of these giants and how they were gigantic. They were huge. Uh, Goliath was probably the best known one. And they were identified easily by having six fingers on their hand rather than five like a human. Now that's a different sermon, but if you get a chance, check that out. That's an amazing thing. The Bible is an interesting book and tells us all about these fallen angels and their, their, their offspring. Now, if you get another chance and you're not doing anything, go to the Cloud Church and uh, look under uh, Bible studies about 
the one where do demons come from you can also look it up on YouTube where do demons come from by Robert Breaker and that should take you to it as well because that all ties in to with these giants and it tells you exactly who demons are a lot of people think that the demons are the fallen angels but if you read the Bible and you look at that video you'll find out it has something to do with the spirits of the giants where they come from but that's another topic another story so what are angels they're ministering spirits they were made higher than man man was made lower than them they're very curious they have jobs and their job is to minister to man and that's what God uses them for what were they called in the Old Testament the sons of God are they still alive today what do they do well what we'll do is we're gonna go through some Old Testament verses where they appear to man then a couple of New Testament verses where they appear to man and we're gonna ask this question when they appear to man do they show up with with wings once again modern Christianity today well, loves to tell you, oh no, angels have wings. One famous old movie, black and white movie, years ago, every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings, the movie says. But is that, where does this idea of angels having wings come from? Is it from the Bible, or could it be a, a teaching from man who has twisted the teachings of the scriptures? That's the question we're going to ask. We're going to go through, look at some appearances of some angels in the Old Testament. Galatians chapter 18. In verse 1 and 2. In Galatians chapter 18, verses 1 and 2, it says, And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. Well, here we have Abraham, and God is appearing to Abraham. And it says, And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. So here we see that there's three of them that appear to Abraham. And the Bible calls them three men. Why would it say they were three men? Because what we're about to see in a minute is that these were angels that appeared. One was the angel of the Lord, the appearance of God in his pre-incarnate state, Jesus Christ. But the other were two angels that in the next chapter God sent to do something. But notice how it mentions angels as men. They appear like men. They look like men. Well, obviously, if they showed up with big, huge wings on their back, or even folded down, but you could still see them, they wouldn't look like men. They would look like some kind of being with wings on its back. So notice how the Bible mentions angels as though they look just like men. Now let's go over to chapter 19. All of chapter 18 is God dealing with Abraham, and Abraham was begging God, please spare Sodom, don't blow it up, because Lot's over there. Well, God sent these other two angels over to, to Lot to rescue him and to get him out and to save him from the destruction that was about to come. Which, by the way, is a great type of the rapture. Uh, America has pretty much become Sodom, and God's going to come back at the rapture and take us out and save us from the wrath to come when his wrath is poured out on the world and the tribulation. But it says, And there came two angels, verse 1 of chapter 19, to Sodom and even, at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot seeing them rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold, my lords, turn in, I pray you, unto your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early and go in your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. So these angels show up, and they must have appeared just like men. And Lot comes out and says, Hey, man, you know, the Bible says entertain angels unawares. I'm sure Lot probably didn't realize at first, Hey, these are angels. So they didn't have any wings. Nor are we told that they had any wings. Well, what happens here in this passage? In, as you continue on in this passage, you find out that the men of Sodom, which, by the way, today are called Sodomites, were so evil and so wicked. Let me, let me turn back real quick to show you this. Genesis chapter 13 and verse 13. What an odd verse, huh? Two thirteens. Thirteen's an unlucky number. Genesis 13, 13 says, But the men of Sodom were wicked, and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Well, that doesn't tell you what God thinks about homosexuality. I don't know what does. And God's not a fan of sodomy. But yet, that's what these people in Sodom were practicing. That's where we get the word from. Sodomy comes from Sodom, a place that God said was exceedingly wicked and full of sinners. Well, over here in this city, here's what happens. Verse 4, But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men 
which came into thee this night. Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. So even the wicked sinners, when they saw the angels, they saw what appeared to be men. So obviously they didn't have any wings on them. Otherwise they would have said, bring out those creatures with the wings on them. They said, bring out the men. And it says, that we may know them. Well, that's a carnal knowledge. If you have a chance, go to YouTube and, and watch the video I made, what, what the uh, Bible says about the F word. This, of course, has to deal with knowing someone carnally in fornication. So, they wanted to fornicate with these men that were really angels, but they thought they were men. They wanted to sodomize them, for lack of another word. That's a biblical word. I'm not trying to offend anyone, but that's what the Bible says. And then look at what he says in verse 7. In verse 7, Lot says, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. So God says sodomy is wicked. Lot says sodomy is wicked. The law of Moses says it's wicked. But yet, today, everyone says, no, it's fine. Okay, well, I, excuse me, I'd I just rather follow the Bible. Thank you. I don't want to follow wickedness because this wickedness, God judged. And when his judgment fell, everybody died. So I don't want to take part of any kind of a sin that God is angry at and, and judges people for. But anyway, continuing on there, what happened? Well, they pushed upon him, and they tried to get at him, and they tried to do certain things. Look at verse 9. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now we will deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. These homosexuals, these sodomites, were so full of lust and wanting to, to rape these men that they were all going to come in and break the door down. Full of lust, reprobates, if you will, thinking only with a carnal mind, wanting to do evil toward others. And then verse 10, but the men, who's it talking about? The two angels. Well, how do you know they're angels? Well, verse 1, and there came two angels. So these men are angels. Why is it called them men? Because they look just like men. So angels can appear in the form of a man, according to the Bible. And it says, and these uh, where was I? Verse 12. And these men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides son-in-law, and thy sons, and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city? Bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place, because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So these angels came to destroy this city. They must be powerful. They must be, as we'll see in a little bit, angels are called strong. They're much stronger than men. And they have special powers. Look at what it says here in verse 4. Uh, let's see, did I miss the verse about being blinded? There it is, verse 11. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they weird themselves to find the door. So picture this, here comes all these sodomites. They're trying to break down the door of Lot. They're threatening him and saying, we're going to rape you if you don't let us rape these two men, who they didn't know were angels that had been sent there to destroy them because they were so lustful and wicked that they wanted to rape people. And then these angels grab Lot and pull him in the door, and then they just kind of go, and every one of the Sodomites is blind, and they're walking around like this, going, well, I can't see, I can't see. So these angels must have powers to be able to do things. Obviously they had power to consume the entire place known as Sodom. And they had power to smite people with blindness. So angels appear like men in the forms of men. And look at verse 15. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot. Once again, these men, these two men, are called angels. So there were three to begin with. One of them was the angel of the Lord. But he sent those other two away. And they looked just like men. But the Bible says they were angels. So according to the Bible, angels can appear in the form of a human being and look just like a man. That's why, as we started this, in Hebrews 13, 2, it says there are some that have entertained angels unawares. Do they still come today? I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> I can't tell you that today there's still angels showing up and doing stuff. Um, I know there are still fallen angels. I know there's still demons in the world today going around causing mi mischief and evil. But this is just one story of Genesis in the time of Abraham where two angels showed up and they look just like men, according to the Bible account. Let's go to Judges chapter 13 next. 
just going to show you a couple of places in the Bible to, to show that what I'm telling you is what the Bible says, not my opinion. I'm not an artist, but if I was, I'd never draw an angel with, with wings. Well, people say, well, then they wouldn't know what it is. Because for so long, people have taught and believed that angels have wings. But in the Bible, it, it doesn't appear that angels have wings. They can appear as men. And other people can entertain them unawares without even knowing that they're angels. And I'm sure the men of Sodom had no idea that those were angels. They just thought they were uh, innocent, good-looking men that they wanted to know and corrupt and do bad things to. Now, Judges chapter 13 and verse 1. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. Well, Manoah turns out to be the father of Samson. But before he, get, he bears Samson, or conceives, and his wife bears consent, Samson, someone appears unto him. Verse 3, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman, excuse me, unto his wife. Someone appears unto his wife and tells him something. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Behold, now thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive, and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive, and bear a son. And she began, the angel begins to tell him all about the son, and who he will be, and everything, which we know later is Samson. Then the woman came and told her husband, verse 6, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God, very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told me his name. So an angel came. Now look at verse 7. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazareth to God from the womb unto the day of his death. Verse 9, and, the, and God hearkened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again to the woman as she sat in the field, but Manoah her husband was not with her. And the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and said unto him, Behold, the man hath appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. So here the angel is said to be an, a man. She's given an account of this angel. And she said, he, this man appeared unto me. So what's she calling the angel? She's calling him a man because he must have appeared as a man. And so, continuing on there, Manoah went and talked to the Lord. In verse 13, the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. And more and more and more. All the way down, it tells us all about the rest of it. But it's interesting how an eyewitness of an angel said, Oh, he's a man because that's what he looked like to her. So obviously no big wings sticking out. It must have been that he took the form of a man to appear as a man to talk to Manoah's wife and talk to Manoah. So that's a second example. First we looked at Abraham. Next we look at Samson's father, Manoah. Let's look now in the book of Daniel. In the book of Daniel we have the great story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And here we have a, a king who is who is Nebuchadnezzar, a king who is an idol worshiper and who, who loves to do evil and, and worship idols. And in Daniel chapter 3, he builds this gigantic idol out of gold and tells everyone, you must bow down to this idol. But after these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, chose not to worship the idol, chose to reject the king and disobey the king threw them into a fiery furnace. And in verse 23 we read, uh, Daniel 3, 23, And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound down into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished, that's astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They sent, answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered, so this is Nebuchadnezzar answering, and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. So Nebuchadnezzar, a lost king, sees an angel, which by the way is the angel of the Lord, that he says, I see a man. Instead of seeing three men in the fire that I threw in, I see four men. So what is he saying? His eyewitness his, his testimony is, I saw a man. No, he saw an angel, but he called it a man because it looked like a man. So how do angels appear? They appear looking like men. 
So angels have the appearance of men. Well, that's Old Testament. Let's look at a couple New Testament appearances of angels as well. And what I'm trying to get at here is never, ever, not once in the entire Bible does it ever talk about an angel showing up and showing off his wings and flapping his wings and everyone saying, oh, that's an angel because he has wings. Never does the Bible say that an angel has wings. However, there are other creatures in the Bible that do have wings. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. But never in the Bible do angels have wings. It's just not there. You can read the whole Bible through and you'll never find an angel that has wings, that appears unto human beings. So Matthew 28, and here we have um, Jesus after he rose again. And it says, And in the end of the Sabbath, that it began in the dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. All right, This is after Jesus rose again, they came to see the grave. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. And his countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. So angels, what are angels like? Well, according to the Bible, angels um, are like lightning. Hmm. Somehow they have appearance that when they appear, they can appear like, I guess, a bright lightning bolt. I don't know. And it says they wear white raiment. So they have on white clothes. So an angel appeared, and the appearance was like lightning with white raiment. And so they showed up and appeared, and verse 5, the angel answered and said to the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. And he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay. Verse 7, and go quickly and tell his disciples. And that's what they did. But notice, nowhere in this passage does it say, and they had wings. <laughs> it says they had appearance of lightning, they wore white clothes, and what else? Well, they must have looked like men. Otherwise, the writer would have said, and man, did they have big wings. But he didn't write that. Matthew didn't pin those words. So they were white, they were clean, and they were the appearance of a man. Luke chapter 1 and verse 11, we have another account in the Bible of, of an angel appearing to somebody. And in Luke chapter 1, we see a man named Zacharias. Zacharias, it turns out, is the father of John the Baptist. And in Luke chapter 1, verse 11 through 13, there's an angel that appears unto him. And it says, But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. And uh, I forgot to read verse 11. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. So we have an angel appearing. And once again, notice that nowhere in the passage does it say, and boy, did it have big wings. <laughs> no, when it appeared, it appeared like a man. Zacharias saw him, and he thought, I wonder who that guy is. So once again, as we read through the Bible, nowhere does it say, they sure had big wings. Luke chapter 2, verse 9 through 14. Here we have an angel appear unto these uh, shepherds out in the field to announce the birth of Jesus. And look, Luke 2, 9 says, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring thee good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And he shall be a sign unto you, and ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, comma, goodwill toward men. So here we have these shepherds in a field, and they see an angel. And then all of a sudden they look into heaven, and they see a heavenly host. Well, that must be all the angels in heaven. And you know, nowhere does it say here, and they all had big wings. Never does the Bible mention an angel having wings. Especially when it appears unto man. Men look at it and say, wow, I wonder who that guy is. So as we go through the Bible, we don't see wings on angels. We see angels appearing and people looking at them and thinking, well, that's, that's a, just a guy, I think. But yet, somehow they knew that it was more than just a man. Maybe it was that feeling and knowing that's pure innocence. One of the, the accounts says, he sure looked terrible. Maybe he's taller than a normal human. 
Maybe that shining in the lightning was what was so terrible that scared them. There's just something about an angel that when you see it, it looks like a man and you confuse it for a man. But also there's somehow you know, no, that's got to be of God. That's sent from God. I don't know. But I know one thing. In the Bible, nowhere does it show an angel with wings. Luke 22, 43 says, And there appeared an angel from heaven, strengthening him. Here's Jesus Christ praying, and an angel from heaven strengthens him. Now let's go to Acts chapter 5. I could go to so many verses because there's so many times that angels appear. I just want to give a couple of examples. In Acts chapter 5, in verse 18 through 20, here we have, I believe, Peter in jail. And it says, They laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they had heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught, and more and more and more. So here's the angel of the Lord showing up. Now an angel, even though he's a spirit, he in some way or another can put himself, uh, I guess he can appear but somehow he can change into a material body. So even though he himself is a spirit, he can somehow form a, a, a material body that can actually do things. And this angel, the angel of the Lord, actually went and opened up the door of a prison. Well, those prison bars are real. They're material. They're, they're, they're bars like this thing here. And they were probably real thick and real round. And somehow that angel could take into a form of a natural form in which he could touch material things and move them. So angels are interesting. They're spirit beings that somehow can take on a human form. I don't know how they change into that, but they can. And they can influence and they can touch the material world. There are many other places in the book of Acts, but there's no time to read about this. But many other uh, places in the Bible that talk about angels, what they can do, what they look like. And not one account, not one, says they have wings. Now let's go to Revelation, because some people might, might beg to differ and say, well, I don't believe you, and you know, the book of Revelation says this. Okay, well, let's look at this. Because this is some of the passages that they like to go to to say that angels have wings. But let me remind you, nowhere in these passages does it say that angels have wings. So what they're doing is they're, they're twisting the scripture, they're, they're adding to it, they're trying to force it to teach something that it doesn't say. So that they can draw pretty paintings with wings on angels. In Revelation chapter 5 verse 2 it says, And I saw a strong angel proclaiming, proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals? Okay, this is the verse I mentioned earlier about angels. What are angels? What are they? Well, they're strong. They have superhuman strength. Something about angels make them very strong. Much stronger than human beings. But I wanted to get to this one, Revelation 7, 2. And it says, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth. Notice it says, ascending. They say, well, if that angel's coming and he's ascending, well, then he's flying up. He must have wings because he's flying. But it doesn't say that he does. Let's go to another verse, at chapter 8. Um, where am I going here? Let me just skip ahead there to verse 13. That's where I wanted to go. And behold, I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. So they say, See, the angel is flying through the midst of heaven. So if he's flying through heaven, then he must have wings. Okay, but where does it say that he has wings? Nowhere in the Bible does it say that the angel has wings. And as we've looked, it says that you can entertain an angel's unaware. Well, you would definitely be aware if he had big old wings. We've also seen that they are ministering spirits and they have a way that they can appear unto people. So they can appear unto people and when they do, they look like men. Now maybe because they have that power to appear like a man, they have a power to instantly go boop and they've got wings on. I, I don't know. But I'm telling you that nowhere in the Bible does it say that these angels have wings. So people that put wings on angels, what are they doing? They're adding to the Bible. They're, they're doing something that the Bible doesn't say. And Revelation 14.6 is another verse. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven. Yeah, he was flying, but he didn't have wings. Uh, I seem to remember a guy named Superman who could fly, 
dun, 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 and yet he had no wings. So you don't have to have wings to fly. Angels can be flying through the midst of heaven without wings. The simple fact is, there's nowhere in the Bible that says that angels have wings. So be careful when people say, angels have wings, you have to believe it. Say, okay, show me that in the Bible. Well, uh, they can't. So I don't want to believe it if I can't find it in the Scriptures. But i tell you what I can find in the Scriptures, and this is important. There are two other beings that in the Bible have wings. We are told that they have wings wings. We have in the Bible seraphims and cherubims. And these are, are different kinds other than angels. You see, the angels were called the sons of God, but these over here, they're different kind of spirit beings that God created, and these do have wings. These over here have wings. Now let's look at a couple verses about them. So even though we're never told that the angels have wings, we are told that there's other classes of spirit beings in heaven that do. And who are they? Well, Isaiah chapter 6. Go back to the book of Isaiah. And it's interesting as you look through the Bible. And this is a really important study. I'm going to try to bring all this back together real quick. Because unless you understand the Bible, you can get confused and be deceived into following some other being other than following Jesus. What do you mean? Well, I'll get to that. I'm getting there. I'm trying as hard as I can to get there. Uh, seraphims. Isaiah 6, verse 1. Well, actually, verse 2. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his faith, and with, with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he, he did fly. So here's a being. In verse 6, then flew one of the seraphims unto me. This being, the seraphim, had six wings. How odd. Isn't that strange? Six wings. And so with those six wings, he had two that covered his face, two that covered his feet, and two that he flew with. What an odd being. What an odd thing. And then verse 6, he flew with them. He had wings and he did fly. Now let's look at another one. Let's go look at the cherubims. Cherubims. Now cherubims, we're not told, have six wings. But they are definitely a different, different class. Go to Exodus 25 different type of a spirit being in heaven. Exodus 25, 20, the Bible says, And the cherubim shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. In chapter 37 of Exodus, again we're told who these are about these cherubims. And the cherubim spread out their wings on high and covered their wings over the mercy seat with their faces one to another, even to the mercy seat were the faces of the cherubims. In 1 Kings, it tells us about them as well. Now, how many do these have? How many wings? I'm not certain. I'm not sure. It might be just four. Because I remember that they, they were on top of the mercy seat and they had wings forward and wings back. So it could be that these have four wings. Uh, but 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 27. Again, we read of the cherubims. 1 Kings 6, 27. And he set the cherubims within the inner house, and they stretched forth the wings of the cherubims, so that the wings of the one touched the one wall, and the wings of the other cherub touched the other wall. And their wings touched one another in the midst of the house. So you have this picture, the wings touching back behind the wall, and then the wings touching forward this way. So it could be very well that these only have four wings. That is, two in the front and two in the back. And how different that would be than these seraphims that have six wings. Now somebody say, well, then that means that the angels have two wings. Not necessarily. Once again, never in the Bible does it tell us that they have wings. Yet it's very specific in many passages that these other beings have this number of, and this, this number of wings, and these have this number. So very specific. So why would the Bible not tell us? if they indeed did have wings. Well, probably because angels don't have wings. Nowhere in the Bible are we told that they do. Now, I want to look at these cherubims here for a second, because they're also called cherubs. I guess that's just a shortening of the word cherubims. And according to the Bible, there were five cherubs in the Bible, and there's one of them that fell. Just like there's a fallen angel, there's a fallen cherub. And that fallen cherub was an evil dude. <laughs> And he, to this day, is an evil dude. Who are these five cherubs? Well, 
we'll go to that in a minute, but according to the Bible, these cherubs, they sat around the throne of God. So God had five cherubs around him. Well, you might know one of them. His name is Michael, Michael the archangel. So an archangel must be a cherub as well. So cherubs are called angels and archangels. Over here is Michael. Then we have uh, Gabriel. Now, according to Jewish tradition, and I hate to go outside of the Bible, so please take this with a grain of salt. I'll put a question mark out of, out of here. But according to Jewish tradition, there was one other one named Uriel and another one named Raphael. And these were the four main cherubims around the throne of God, which, by the way, the Bible even tells us about them to this day. There's four of them. But there were five of them. There was one right here. Who is that? Who was that fifth cherub? Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 28. It's amazing when you read the Bible and get an idea of what heaven's going to be like and who's going to be there and the beings that you're going to see. And it's just like, what an interesting picture. But you won't know that unless you read the Bible. Can you imagine getting to heaven and not reading the Bible and not knowing any of this stuff and going, where the heck am I? This is weird. <laughs> what? You've got six wings over there? What's that thing with, with four wings? What? Where am I? <laughs> That's why we read the Bible. It's a wonderful story. But it's also truth. And it's also telling us about what to expect in heaven. So you go to Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 14. Well, let me read verse 13. Thou hast been in the garden of Eden. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel. And the workman, I'll skip ahead, and the workmanship of the tablets of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Well, without a doubt, God here is talking to Satan. Satan was in the Garden of Eden, the serpent. And look what God says in verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so, thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, that thou walkest upon the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in the ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. So there was someone who was the anointed cherub that covereth. So God allowed all these cherubs to be around him, five of them, and he let one be up here that covered, and that was Lucifer. You might know him as Satan or the devil. Or that old dragon or the serpent. Let me go ahead and put that up here. The dragon or the serpent. So Satan or Lucifer was the anointed cherub. He was the anointed cherub that covereth. So he's up here. Now look at that. You can draw a star uh, there because you have the five points. Now what did Lucifer do? Well, we're told in the Bible that he fell. He rebelled against God. So if you take that star and you invert it downward, you get an upside down star. I guess that's good. And you know what? To this day, devil worshipers love upside down stars. Why is it that devil worshippers want to worship an upside down star? Because Satan has taught them, and deep down they, they know, because of what transgressed, what took place, that Lucifer is now the cherub that's no longer anointed, he's the one that's down. So this star, this way that how God set it up from the beginning has been inverted, and it's a sign of rebellion, an upside down star. And it's a sign of Lucifer. So you go and you see people that are devil worshippers and, and, and Satanists. What do they love? They love that out, upside down star. Why? Because of this. Because of what happened. Because of what the Bible teaches. How Satan fell from heaven. So, if this is true, and I believe it is, then what does it mean? It means Satan has wings. We're told that he was the anointed cherub, and we're told that cherubs have wings. So that means that Satan had wings. Now how does Satan appear? He's a, he was an archangel at one time. So 2 Corinthians chapter 11. If Satan appeared today, how would he appear? Well, he would probably appear as an angel with wings. So you see how important it is to read the Bible and understand? Many Christians in the world today think, Oh, all angels have wings. But in the Bible, when angels appeared, they looked like men without wings. But in the Bible, there is an angel, an evil angel, that has wings, named Lucifer. So if he showed up with his wings, who would accept him? Most Christians. 
Most Christians will say, oh, you must be an angel of God. So you see how important it is to read the Bible and understand that angels don't have wings, at least not God's angels. <laughs> These archangels, the good ones do, but Satan does also. And what does the Bible say? 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15 says, speaking of, of the devil's um, false ministers, it says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Satan has his ministers who try to pretend to be the ministers of Christ when they're really ministers of Satan. And in verse 14 says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. The Bible tells us that Satan, Satan is an angel of light. And can you imagine him showing up? How would he show up? Probably with big old wings on his back. And look at verse uh, 15. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. You know, Satan has ministers. Who are his ministers? His ministers would be what? The fallen angels or the demons. And he sends them out to to do his agenda and to preach what he wants to preach. The Bible says there's in the last days there'll be seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And I wonder if they show up with wings as well. So how do you know if something's an angel of God? Well, one of God's angels you can entertain underwears. Why? Because he doesn't have angels. But if something shows up to you and it's got big wings and it's shiny like light, uh, my first thought would be, hey, you're Satan, get away. <laughs> I don't want to accept you as of God. You must be of Satan. Because I've read the Bible, and I don't see in the Bible where these people over here that are used to showing up to people have wings. So you see why it's so important to go through the Bible and understand and read? What is Satan? Well, the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, what he is. Revelation 12, 9, the Bible says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole earth, which was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So Satan has angels. What are they? They must be these. And the Bible says that he's a dragon. Well, almost every picture I've ever seen of a dragon, which, by the way, are there really dragons? I don't know. I'll put a picture up here uh, of, a, of a dragon that, that shows wings. I don't know if this is a real picture. This was found in Germany or someplace. Could be real, could not. I don't know. But dragons are always drawn with wings. Huh. Is there a reason for that? Maybe because in the Bible, Satan is an evil angel with wings. So watch out. If you're an artist, please don't paint angels with wings anymore because you might be painting these guys instead of the ones that are of God. Let's look at some more verses real quick, and I'll be done. Revelation chapter 9, verses 2 through 11. In the future, in the tribulation, there's going to be some strange things taking place. And when these strange things take place, we find out that there'll be some very odd creatures that come out of the earth to attack man. Watch what the Bible says about them. Verse 2, Revelation 9, 2 through 11. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts among the earth. And unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was co commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Now watch what these were like. Verse 7. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were, were as it were crowns of gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had their hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were like the teeth of lions, as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as they were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings, uh-oh, the sound of their what? Their wings. Well, these things, these bad, evil, wicked things, have wings. But never in the Bible are we told that these things, the angels of God, have wings. Interesting. 
It says, and they have wings. The sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. Verse 10, and they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. Now watch this, verse 11. And they had a king over them, which was the king of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Apollyon, perdition. He's the son of perdition. Who, who's that tie into? That ties into Satan. So tying all this together, what am I trying to show you today? What does the Bible say? Well, there are true angels that come from God, but never do we ever see anywhere where we're told that they have wings. They always appear like a man. But there are some things that God made with wings. He made some seraphims. He made some cherubims. Matter of fact, he had a cherub that he built with wings that fell. That's Lucifer. Lucifer is also known as Apollyon or Abaddon. Lucifer is evil and he has a legion of fallen angels. And in the end, in the tribulation, he brings out of the depths, out of the bottomless pit, this huge army of beings that have wings. So it makes you want to steer away from anything that has wings, doesn't it? In the Bible, birds are likened unto unclean spirits for some reason. Why is that? Well, birds have wings. So could it be that the Bible is telling us that unclean spirits have wings? So you better be careful if you ever say, Well, there appeared unto me an angel from heaven, and boy, did it have beautiful wings. I'll say, Liar. I don't think so. That wasn't God. I think it was him or one of these guys, fallen angels, Satan or the devil that appeared to you, and you better watch out. Stay away from winged creatures. The Bible talks about fiery serpents that fly. Serpents with wings. Interesting. Dragons. Wings. Watch out for anything that has wings. Go to Romans chapter 8. And I'll close with a couple more verses. But you better watch out. You better read your Bible. See how easy it is to be deceived? Oh, how beautiful it is to look at these pretty, pretty pictures by these great artists of angels and to see these beautiful beings with these gorgeous wings. But you're not looking at these guys. You're not looking at the sons of God. You're not looking at God's angels. You're looking at angels of light that are connected with Satan, Lucifer. Watch out for those beings with wings. Romans chapter 8 tells us, and, and tells us something wonderful. Don't be afraid of angels with wings. In um, Romans 8 it says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Verse 37. 38 says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Boy, if that's not a great promise, I don't know what is. I preached a message not too long ago about once saved, always saved in the Bible. Once you're saved, you're always saved. You need to go look at that. Go to the Cloud Church, look it up. But these angels, they can't separate us from the love of God. These creatures, Satan, the fallen angel, when you're saved, you're saved and you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Let me close with this. Interesting verse that the Apostle Paul gives us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 3. Boy, I thought this would be a short Bible study, but it's turning out to be a little longer than I thought. But I hope it's a blessing to you, and I hope it helps you to not be deceived into following winged creatures. Stay away from things with wings. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 3. Well, verse 2. 2 and 3 say, Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? This is Christians. Someday Christians will judge the world. And if the world shall be judged by you, and ye, are, and ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters. Verse 3, Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? The Apostle Paul says to us Christians, Don't you know someday you're going to judge angels? Well, in the Bible, it talks about in the last days, uh, after the rapture, after the tribulation, then the millennium comes. And at the end of the millennium is the great white throne of judgment. And the great white throne of judgment, all the dead will be brought forth and be judged and be cast into the lake of fire. But you know what? It's not just them. According to the Bible, it's going to be these angels too. And isn't it interesting that these guys, that's when they're going to be judged as well. And we who are Christians are going to judge these fallen angels. What an interesting thing. What an amazing thing. So if you're a Christian, please don't allow yourself to be deceived 
into thinking that angels have wings when the Bible is very clear that they don't. They look just like men. But the Bible tells us about a lot of other creatures that do have wings. Some are of God. One that once was of God fell and raised himself an army of winged creatures. And they're out trying to deceive the world. I hope this has been a fun study. I love studying the Bible. To me, this is, this is fun to look at things in the Bible. I hope it's been fun to you. I hope it's an encouragement. And if, if nothing else, I hope you just remember, angels don't have wings. If I ever see a creature with a wing, I know that's not going to be of God. <laughs> and that's what the whole study was, was hoping to show, is that do angels have wings? Well, no. And yet, yes. God's angels, no. But the devil's angels, yes. All these pictures and paintings everywhere of angels with wings, somebody just didn't know what they were doing and thought they were painting the angels of God. Yet they were painting the angels of Satan. We need to know that, we need to preach that, and we need to understand that so we don't be deceived. Alright, God bless. Thank you for watching this.